What is up guys, my name is Ignas, welcome back to the channel. Today we will again be doing a dividend comparison on free names from the financial sector. My watchlist suggested that there could be some opportunity in these stocks. So the first name is Morgan Stanley, ticker symbol MS. Similar to other banks this year, the stock is down for 26.34%. In one year, the stock is lower for 13.89%. But there has been growth in the last five years, with the stock moving from $43.69 in 2017, higher for 68.92% in those five years, to $73.85. With the stock going lower, it is coming closer to that $100 billion in market cap, now at $129 billion. And in turn, the dividend yield is also moving higher, now at 3.79%. So Morgan Stanley is a large name from the capital markets industry. And I have two more names to put against it for today's comparison. So second is Charles Schwab, ticker symbol SCHW. On the year today, the stock is down for 27.31%. One year's performance is a bit better, lower for 14.01%. And in the last five years, the stock went from $41.62 in 2017 to $62.47 in five years, up for 49.78%. Market cap is similar to Morgan Stanley's at $118 billion, but the dividend yield is more modest at 1.28%. And now the third name for today's comparison will be Goldman Sachs, ticker symbol GS. On the year today, the stock is now almost 30% at minus 28.66. In one year, the stock is still down over 20% at 21.11. And in five years, the stock went from $217 in 2017 higher for around $65 in a year, up for 29.86%. Market cap is just shy of $100 billion at 96.87, but dividend yield is moving a bit higher, currently at 2.84%. So these are the three stocks that we will be comparing, and to make it more easy to follow, we'll be using Google Sheets. So I have the tickers for each name in the table, and we'll use five different metrics for this comparison. Dividend yield, dividend payout ratio, years of consecutive dividend increases, five-year compound annual dividend growth rate, and lastly dividend yield compared to its five-year average. The name that has the best result under each metric gets a point, then we'll calculate how much points each of them have, and in the end the stock with the most points will be considered the winner of this comparison. I hope that the rules here are clear, so let's start. So the first metric we are comparing is the dividend yield. It's calculated by taking the annual dividend per share and dividing it by the share price. So Morgan Stanley is currently paying an annual dividend of $2.80 per share, and at the current price of $73.84 per share, that is the dividend yield of 3.78%. Now let's switch to Charles Schwab. They are paying an annual dividend of $0.80 per share, so at the current price of $62.23, that is a dividend yield of 1.28%. And lastly, we have Goldman Sachs. Their annual dividend is $8 per share, and currently the stock is trading at $282.71, meaning that they are paying a dividend under a yield of 2.83%. Second metric for the comparison is the dividend payout ratio. Percentage here shows how much of company's earnings are paid back to investors as dividends. So in Morgan Stanley's case, the payout ratio is now at 33.34%, meaning that exactly one-third of company's earnings are paid back as dividends. Now if we switch to Charles Schwab, the payout ratio here is way lower at 15.83%, meaning that just one-sixth of Charles Schwab earnings are used for dividend payments, and the rest of that money may be used to reinvest back into the company, but also to increase on that annual dividend. Third is Goldman Sachs with a payout ratio of 18.63%. This one is just a bit worse with one-fifth of earnings used for dividends. Third metric are the years of consecutive dividend increases. So for how many years the company managed to increase dividends for at least one quarter every year? Unfortunately, in Morgan Stanley's case, they only increased the dividend from last year. But it looks like that is not much different from the other two. So the same is for Charles Schwab where they have increased dividends for one year. And in Goldman Sachs case, they have similarly increased the dividend just from the last year. Now metric number 4 is the compound annual dividend growth rate. We'll use the 5 year average going with the estimate for 2023. So for Morgan Stanley, next year's 5 year dividend growth rate is at 20.55%. Now switching to Charles Schwab, the compound annual 5 year growth rate is at 11.70%. 
and Goldman Sachs has it very close to Morgan Stanley, estimated to be at 20.49%. Now metric number 5 is the dividend yield compared to its 5 year average. To calculate that we'll be using my dividend investing watchlist. So we are in the tab for Morgan Stanley, and here we have information for the dividend yield history for each quarter of the last 5 years. And out of that we calculated that on average in 5 years the dividend yield was at 2.42%. Now we are able to compare this average to the yield for each quarter. So there was quite a decent opportunity when the stock price fell in 2020, with the yield going up to 3.39%, over average for 4.06%, and then worst time to get in was 2021, where the yield dropped to the lows of 1.66%, which was under average for 41.42%. But this year the stock price has been going lower again, and we are now looking at a dividend yield of 3.75%, which is now the highest it has been in the last 5 years, over the 5 year average for 54.93%. So this is here that percentage that we will be comparing. Let's switch to Charles Schwab, and here on average in 5 years the dividend yield was at 1.18%. So worst time to get into the stock was back in 2018, where the dividend yield was at 0.61%, under average for 48.37%, and best time was with the price dropping in 2020, where we saw the yield going to 2.13%, way over average for 80.79%. But if we are planning getting the stock right now, at a dividend yield of 1.28%, we are still getting it over the 5 year average, though not that far away of 8.34%. Now let's switch to Goldman Sachs, and on average in 5 years dividend yield here was at 1.72%. So worst time was in the beginning of 2018, where the stock was trading at a yield of 1.14%, under average for 33.54%, and then with the price dropping in the middle of 2020, we saw the dividend yield going up to 2.52%, over the 5 year average for 46.92%. But if we would be interested in getting the stock right now at a yield of 2.86%, that is the highest it has been in the last 5 years, and is now over the 5 year average for 66.74%. Now if you yourself would be interested in doing a similar analysis for a dividend paying stock, you are able to do just that by following the first link at the top of the description. Otherwise feel free adding tickers in a comment below, and I'll consider adding them into my watchlist here. Maybe there are some interesting opportunities out there that I'm still missing. So now that we have all the numbers for each metric in, let us start assigning points. So for the largest dividend yield at 3.78%, the first point goes to Morgan Stanley, then with the lowest payout ratio at 15.83%, a point goes to Charles Schwab. Now as for the years of consecutive dividend increases, each of them increased dividends only from the last year, so no point is assigned for this metric. 5 year compound annual dividend growth rate was very close, but with a small lead at 20.55% a point goes to Morgan Stanley. And comparing the current dividend yield with its 5 year average, with 66.74% over a point goes to Goldman Sachs. We can calculate the results, so Morgan Stanley got 2 points, Charles Schwab won and Goldman Sachs also won. This means that with the sum of 2 points, Morgan Stanley is considered the winner of this comparison. And that was it, make sure to support the channel and leave a thumbs up under the video. Which of the free names that we looked into today do you prefer? Share your stance in a comment below. If you would be interested in getting access to my dividend investing watchlist, then consider memberships. By becoming a member you will get access to Discord, where I share all my Google Sheets documents and all the buys and sells exactly when I do them. This could be a great option to track my moves closely. Last week I've looked into several other companies, so if you would be interested in any of these then click on a video that is currently on the screen. And that was it from my side, thank you for watching and I will be seeing y'all in the next one.